Shalom. Welcome once again to Jewish Awareness Ministries School of Biblical and Jewish Studies. We will be continuing our look at understanding the Israel and Palestinian issue. If you recollect from our previous lesson, we ended at 1988. That was the date in December of that year, November initially, where the PLO recognized the existence of Israel. The world ballyhooed that statement. But what they didn't say was, we recognize the right of Israel to exist as a Jewish state. Well, what they were doing at that time was revitalizing the phases program that the PLO had adopted in 1974. In the Yom Kippur War of 1973, the Arab world thought that they were going to destroy Israel. And it looked bleak at the beginning of that war. But by the end, things had turned around. And Israel was routing the Arab nations, realizing that they could not defeat Israel militarily. In the summer of 1974, the leadership of the PLO agreed on a phases program for destroying Israel, step by step. That lay dormant for 14 years. And in 1988, when the PLO, with Yasser Arafat, coming out and saying, we recognize the existence of Israel, it was the revitalization, the restarting, of that phases program. The second in command at that time, Salakalov, said so over and over again. Well, what that brings us to is 1993. And in 1993, September of that year, the Oslo Accords were agreed upon. This was a momentous occasion, at least many thought it was, in the quest for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. The Oslo Accords were a declaration of principles, agreed to between Israel and the PLO. It's an agreement on how to proceed toward a permanent agreement that will be initiated in five years if all goes as planned. Well, since there were 25 years from that time, obviously it did not go as planned. But what was this all about? Well, we are told, according to PLO representative Abu al-Anan, reported in the U.S. News Moral Report in September of 93, quote, the agreement is the framework of our national covenant. We have to accept the deal and wait for a change in the circumstances that could lead to the elimination of Israel. Bassam Abu Sharif, political advisor to Arafat, said, quote, This is not a peace treaty with Israel. This is the first step, stage, phase, in the transfer of authority to Palestinian self-government. This is just the uh, continuation, really, what goes back to 1964 and the articles of... Uh, principles in the PLO uh, doctrine of destroying Israel. This was just the continuation of it. Prior to the signing of that accord, Arafat confirmed, quote, this, the present peace talks and agreement, is the phase plan that we accepted in 1974. This was reported in the Jerusalem Post on September 11th. 1993. This is just the phases program that we uh, agreed upon in 1974. Well, in May of 1994, there was the Cairo Agreement signed. The agreement on the Gaza Strip and the Jericho area, usually referred to as the Cairo Agreement, was finally signed in the Egyptian capital by Israeli Prime Minister Rabin and Arafat, with American, Soviet, and Egyptian representatives as witnesses. Now all this was as well as a continuation or revitalization of the FACES program. 
May 10, 1994, Arafat was secretly recorded in a speech in Johannesburg, South Africa, in a local mosque. Among other things, he said this, you have to understand our main battle is Jerusalem. You have to come and fight a jihad to liberate Jerusalem, your precious shrine. And this is very important. What they, the Israelis, are saying is that it is their capital. No, it's not their capital, it's our capital. It is your capital. It is the first shrine of Islam. Again, I have to say, and he quotes now from the Quran, and they entered the mosque as they entered it before, onward to victory, onward to Jerusalem. May He goes on, Arafat. And he likens the Oslo and Cairo agreements with Israel to the Prophet Muhammad's agreement with the Koresh tribe in A.D. 628, which was called the Pact of Hudibiyah. In order to conquer Mecca, Muhammad adopted a strategy of agreeing to a 10-year peace not planning and keeping the agreement at all, but to lull the Meccans into a false sense of security and to build up his own forces. Two years after signing this agreement, Muhammad attacked the city when he felt his forces were strong enough to capture it. And he did. The Pact of Hudibiyah, Deception. In June 1994, Arafat again repeated his May 10 statements when, in speaking to a meeting of Palestinian contractors in Tunis, he said the Israeli PLO agreement was short-term, and like the agreement the Prophet Muhammad reached with the Koresh tribe. Now this reference would be done over and over and over again in subsequent years not only by Yasser Arafat, but by the man who followed him in authority and power, Muhammad Abbas, and others within the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and ultimately the PA, the Palestinian Authority. Nothing changed. In November of 94, Arafat wrote to a 10-member rejectionist front of PLO and Islamic groups. He said this, Cooperation and understanding between the PLO and the rejectionist organizations is what will lead to the speedy retreat of Israel from the occupied territories in the first stage. Until the establishment of a Palestinian state with its capital in Jerusalem, and only a state that can continue the struggle to remove the enemy from all Palestinian lands. All Palestinian lands are the entire nation of Israel. First stage, first step. This was the plan. In April of 1995, while speaking in Arabic before a Palestinian audience, Arafat gave a speech and, and again mentioned the Pact of Hudibiyah in relation to the Oslo Agreement. This was reported in the Jerusalem Post in August 5th, 1995 edition. April 16th, we shall look at you tomorrow sitting in Jerusalem, the capital of Palestine, when the prophet made the peace of Hudibiyah. I remind you, Arafat says, I remind you and I remind all of our people and our Arab nation and our Islamic nation, the tribe of Koresh, objected to make any mention of the title, Messenger of Allah. Omar ibn al-Khattab and Ali ibn Abu Talib said, how can we accept such humi humiliation of our religion, O Messenger of Allah? And when we sign the Oslo Accord, if any of you has any objection to that agreement, I have a hundred, Arafat said. In April of 1998, there was an interview with Egypt's Orbit Television, Arafat, 
reaffirmed the 1974 10 point, become 10 point stages program, and referred to what he was doing by referencing once again the Pact of Huribeya, as well as Saladin's conquest of Jerusalem from the Crusaders. June 24, 2001. Fazel Husseini, who was a PA representative for uh, Jerusalem Affairs, reported by Al Arabi uh, of Egypt, said this. Had the US and Israel realized before Oslo that all that was left of the Palestinian national movement and the pan-Arab movement was a wooden horse called Arafat, or the PLO, they would never have opened their fortified gates and let it inside their walls. The US and Israel brought life from the dead, as it were, to Arafat and the PLO through the Oslo Accords. He went on, this effort could have been much better, broader, and more significant had we made it clearer to ourselves that the Oslo Agreement, or any other agreement, is just a temporary procedure, or just a step, a stage, towards something bigger, bigger. We distinguish the strategic long-term goals from the politically phased goals, which we are compelled to accept temporarily due to international pressure. Palestine according to the higher strategy, is from the river to the sea. In other words, the entire nation of Israel. Palestine, in its entirety, is an Arab land, the land of the Arab nation. This is the goal, has always been the goal, and still is the goal of the Palestinian leadership. In 2011, in an interview on Al Jazeera TV, senior Palestinian official Abbas Zaki also mentioned this PA, Palestinian Authority, stages plan. Here's what he said in the interview. The agreement is based on the borders of June 4th, 1967. While the agreement is on the borders of June 4th, the president, Mahmoud Abbas at that point, at this time, understands, we understand, and everyone knows that it is impossible to realize the inspiring idea or the great goal in one stroke, one step, one phase. He goes on. If Israel withdraws from Jerusalem, if Israel uproots the settlements, 650,000 settlers, if Israel removes the security fence, what will be with Israel? Israel will come to an end. If I say that I want to remove it from existence, this will be great, great. But it is hard. This is not a stated policy. You can't say it to the world. You can say it to yourself among the Arab world. In 2012, Mahmoud Abbas came up with a plan to destroy Zionism, reported in the Jewish press in January of 2014. But what he came up with in 2012, quote, the PLO issued a detailed 56-page strategy document at the end of 2012. And the PLO has been following the plan slavishly. But one of the points mentioned was Quote, to develop a strategy to work with Israeli society, particularly with the forces that supported the principle of two states on the 1967 borders. All those peace-loving Israeli leftist groups who enthusiastically meet Palestinian Arab officials, until the smart ones see the truth, are unwittingly part of the plan to divide and destroy Zionism, and eventually the Jewish state. Mahmoud Abbas speaks just mockingly 
of the foolishness of the leftist groups in Israel thinking they can get peace with the Palestinians. What is it about leftist, progressive thinking that blinds them to the realities of the world and what's taking place? Especially when uh, you have these quotes that clearly show the intent of the PLO, of Arafat, of Abbas, and what they want to do. July 19th, 2013 on PATV, this was uh, Mahmoud al-Habash, the Minister of Religious Affairs of the Palestinian Authority, said this. The Palestinian leadership's sense of responsibility towards its nation made it take political steps about 20 years ago, i.e. signing the Oslo Accords. Despite the controversy, despite much criticism, and much opposition by some, it brought us to where we are today. We have a Palestinian authority, and the world recognizes the Palestinian state. All this never would have happened through Hamas's impulsive adventure, but only through the wisdom of the leadership, conscious action, consideration, and walking the right path, which leads us to achievement exactly like the prophet Muhammad did in the treaty of Hudibiyah, even though some opposed him. This is amazing. Why are those in Israel still talking about peace with the Palestinians? Why is the Western world pushing it? What the Palestinians have always wanted is the destruction of Israel. Nothing has changed. In December of 2013, on official Syrian satellite TV, the member of Fatah's Central Committee, Abbas Zaki, said this, quote, you can relax. We find ourselves united for the first time. Even the most extreme among us, Hamas, or the fighting forces, want a state within the 67 borders. Afterward, we will have something to say because the inspiring idea cannot be achieved all at once, rather in stages. What's the inspiring idea? The destruction of all of Israel and the establishment of a Palestinian Arab state in the entire land of Israel, done by stages. January 19, 2016, the Mon news agency reported this. This was an interview with that agency. Tafik Tarawi, a member of the Fatah Central Committee, he's aligned with the Palestinian Authority, said, quote, Palestine stretches from the river to the sea. That's from the Jordan to the Mediterranean. A Palestinian state in the 1967 borders with Jerusalem as its capital, is just a phase, one step, a stage, as far as I am concerned, he said. Quotes like we, what we've looked at can be multiplied over and over and over again. Nothing has changed from the establishment of the PLO in 1964. Israel truly desires peace. The Palestinians, led by their leadership, truly desire the destruction of the nation of Israel and the establishment of another Arab state on all the land of Israel. We'll continue our look at understanding the Israel-Palestinian issue next time we get together.